Hello and welcome to the Lunchroom Syndicate at the Jock Table. Today we are going to be talking about the first family of hockey. We have a couple of Calder Trophy winners, a couple of league MVPs, some Vesna trophies go through here. All that and more as the Lunchroom Syndicate talks the all-time best Colorado Avalanche. FKA the Quebec Nordiques. In case you have not joined us for any of our previous videos, we have a three-tier list. Our top tier in this case is the maroon tier, which is the, the no shits, the obvious picks for the all-time tier. Uh, our next tier, the middle tier, the blue tier in this case, is going to be guys that are in serious discussion, but maybe a step below what we would consider the top tier. And then we have the white tier, who are guys who deserve to be on this list, but really aren't really in discussion here. Yeah, and as we're going through, we are sticking with our usual format of picking 12 forwards. That's four left side, four right side, four down the middle, and then our full defensive core, three left-handed and three right-handed defensemen and two goaltenders. So first up, we have our face of the franchise, Zunk. Who are you nominating today? And I think Colorado Avalanche. And specifically, when I think those great dynasty teams of the 90s and early 2000s, there's three guys that come in mind. Sackett, Roy, and Forsberg. And Forsberg is the one that I always remember being just absolutely electric. One of the best players ever. What kind of stats are we looking at with Forsberg? 503 assists on 500 Forsberg games played, 705 total points. 540 penalty minutes. He was just an absolute beast. Well, your 544 games, I'm going to go 2,177. Your 202 goals, I'm going to go 890. 503 assists, how about 1,493 assists for a total of 2,383 points. 1,190 penalty minutes. Who you got that's going to beat that? Who the fuck are you talking about? I am talking about the Statsny patriarchy. Oh, the Statsnys. <laughs> oh, that's two people. It is not two people. Is there three of them fuckers? No. I see three. Well, you better, you better keep on looking because there are four Statsnys in the Quebec, Colorado franchise. Oh my God, we have what? Anton, Paul, Peter, and Marion. Peter, Paul, and Marion. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of stats needs on one goddamn team. That is a lot of stats needs on one goddamn team. And that's why they are the face of the franchise, the faces of the franchise, the Mount Rushmore's of Quebec slash Colorado. Like, you're like, oh, when I think Colorado, I think Peter Forsberg. Well, I got an entire family that disagrees with you. <laughs> well, you know what I got to say to that? What's that? Fuck you. <laughs> You gave me all those stats. I thought you were going to go with Wayne Gretzky for a minute there. I'm like, geez. Wayne like, Gretzky wishes he were the stat sneeze. So uh, can we can we just now say the real face of the franchise? Joe Sackick is easily the face of the franchise, um, both as a player and now as a GM. Um, over 1,600 points. He played over 1,300 games. Uh, he was there for the Quebec days through the Colorado days. Um, just an absolute legend, Joe Sackick, face of the franchise. Right wing side, who are we looking at? We are looking at Real Kuliakles, Adam Deadmarsh, Milan Hayduk, Jerome Aginla, Mike Keane, Claude Lemieux, Owen Nolan, Wilf Piment, Miko Rantanen, and Marion Statsnees. Real Cloutier, 284 points, 236 games, a maroon tier player. Adam Deadmarsh. Deadmarsh. Uh, to many people, this is one of the first names you think of when you think Colorado Avalanche in the 90s. 
He did not have the skill of a Joe Sack or a Peter Forsberg, but if there is one man who epitomizes what the Colorado Avalanche were in the 90s and 2000s, it is Adam Denmarsh. He is a Maroon tier, easily. I would have gone down one because, man, we're going to be having everybody Maroon tier because Milan Hayduk, massive amount of skill. He is a Maroon tier player. Oh, uh, one of your favorite players of all time, Jerome Ginla. I didn't realize he played as many games in Colorado as he did. I know he spent a little bit of time there. I just assumed it was maybe a season, season and a half. But he played 225 games. Uh, was towards the tail end of his career. To me, it's a white tier, but uh, definitely a player who's going to be on another list in the future. Uh, Mike Keen, gritty type player. Uh, not much more than that. And uh, just doesn't have it here. He's going to be white tier for me. Claude Lemieux. He was a pain in the ass for Colorado. Uh, the instigator, the the match that lit the Colorado-Detroit all-time rivalry. For me, he's a blue tier because he spent a lot of time there, but you could probably convince me he's a man as well. Owen Nolan. Just not quite enough time here in Colorado for me. 268 games, uh, more than a cup of coffee, and 224 points in those. Um, really good player, but speaking of knowing him for a different team, uh, that's Owen Nolan. Um, I'd probably go blue tier. Will Payment. Uh, he's a, uh, you might know him more than I do because I know absolutely nothing about him, so he's a white tier for me. Yeah, uh, the same. Miko Rantanen, and he's he's in the argument of who's the best player in Colorado, and you got uh, you got at least four players making that argument currently with them. He's one of the four. Uh, Miko Rantanen is maroon. Marion Stancy, uh, a blue tier for me, a, almost a point per game player, almost a maroon tier in that, in that lot of level. But I think if Owen Nolan and Claude are, are blue, I feel like he's in the blues tier as well. So we have four names here that are our top tier we have four selections they're all in Yay. which order are you going to go in who's your number one milan hayduk oh above miko huh as of for now i guess yeah i think miko's gonna end up taking over that um but currently not there yet and then we're down to two players adam deadmarsh ria cloutier i have seen one of them play and i really liked him uh, so that's my vote goes for dead marsh but same i mean that's where i'm going to dead marsh i i don't i was kind of surprised you put real clear and the burn tier to be honest with you really it's well over a point per game yeah the, it's well outside of all over the point per game okay that's our right wing side of milan hayduk miko rantanen adam dead marsh yeah cloutier Great defense for the Colorado Avalanche. This might be our only team where the right side is stronger than the left side. We have Tyson Berry, Rob Blake, Jeff Brown, Stephen Finn, Adam Foote, Eric Johnson, Yui Pruk, Kale McCarr, and Randy Moeller. Tyson Berry, really solid player, but he's not somebody I really thought of as like an all-time great. Just based off of that, I'm going to go blue tier. Next up is one of the all-time greatest defensemen, Rob Blake. Bigger name for another team, but Rob Blake spent some time in Colorado. He's a tough one for me. 208 points in 322 games, which is not bad at all. I'm trying not to give his name value too much of an overemphasis. I'm going to go blue. I think another player that's not quite here is Jeff Brown. Jeff Brown, really solid puck moving defenseman. He's one of those defensemen that uh, probably be a little better in today's NHL style than he was in his own time. Um, but even with that, I'm going blue tier. Stephen Finn. If his stats doesn't show it, he uh, murders people. 1,500 penalty minutes in 605 games. I mean, white tier for me, just because his points ain't there, but he's at least a blue. 1,500 penalty minutes. We like those kind of players. Yeah, we do. And speaking of those types of players, there is none better than our next nominee of Adam Foote. Just under 1,000 games played in Colorado. 
a real tough son of a bitch captain for for a while there in Colorado. Adam Foot is top tier. Eric Johnson's a very very good defenseman for them. Maybe not quite as good as his lofty draft pedigree what was to be expected. He was number one overall. I like Eric Johnson a lot. I don't know if he's much more than a white tier here. Oh, see, okay, now we have to go blue because I, I really wanted to kind of argue more for towards a top tier because I, I really don't like how much disrespect Eric Johnson gets. He is so solid defensively. Uwe Krupp is another just like top-notch fucking defenseman. He's a real solid stay-at-home defenseman. Uwe Krupp is fucking top tier. Kale McCarr, absolute steal for the Colorado Avalanche. 94 points already in 101 games, already a Norris Trophy candidate almost yearly. It's hard for me to put a guy this early in his career into a maroon tier, into a top tier, but man, he almost deserves it at this point. I think he does. I think he should already have a Norris. He had my vote last year. I don't have a lot to say about Randy Moeller, solid defenseman, white tier. Once again, we do not have a discussion on who makes the team. We just need to come up with an order. I am sticking with what I said previously while talking about Adam Foote. He's my number one guy. Yeah, easy number one. Number two for me would be probably Cal McCarr. Cal McCarr over Uve? I think he's just a better player than you would for Bob, like you would for two. So our three right-handed defensemen are Adam Foote, Kale McCarr, and Uwe Krupp. So let's check out the left defense. We have Francois Boitchman, Sam Gerard, Curtis Lecision, John Michael Wiles, Sandus Ozilich, and Norman Rochefort. Francois Boishman, we've talked about him before. He would be below whatever he was on in Anaheim here in Colorado. Uh, for me, it was just kind of, hey, I'm running short on names, and he's a solid defenseman, but he's white here. Next up, Sam Gerard, uh, 113 points in 268 games. On this list, he's probably a blue, but on most lists, I feel him at white. Curtis Lecision, really solid, gets the job done. Nothing uh, too exciting with him, though. Another white tier. John Michael Waddles might be the only true maroon tier on this on this side for me, 275. For this side, not if he was right or a different position. I don't know if he's a burn tier, but there's not a lot of good players on this side. Uh, I have to give you a blue tier because you were going maroon. I was sticking with probably he was like borderline white blue for me. Your Sandus Olsenish. He's probably the most exciting name on this list. Even with that being said, he's he's a blue tier. Norman Rochford looks like a Norman. Don't know anything about him. Doesn't blow me away on stats. He's a white tier. Uh, so we have three blue tier. So now we need to come up with an order for them. I mentioned John Michael Lyles, Mont Lyles of the Maroon for the side just because of his points and games played. I mean, he would be my default one. Okay. So I have to put him down at number two because he was third on my list. Sandus was my number one. Okay. Sam Gerard's probably going to overtake. Michael Lyles at some point, but I just don't think he's there yet. None of them really stick out. This is one of the weaker lefts we've had. Left wing. We have Andrew Brunette, Alan Cote, Michelle Goulet, Valerie Kaminsky, Gabriel Landeskog, a.k.a. Land of God, Cody McLeod, Antoine Stansny, Alex Tange, and Volte Volsky. Andrew Brunette's the first guy we're looking at. Really solid depth forward. And one of those guys you need to win games, so he's a blue tier. Outside of the amazing stash, Elaine Cote has a lot of games played, has a little bit more points than Andrew Burnett, but far more games. I don't see him much more than a soft blue tier. Goulet. Now, if we're just judging muzzies, that's, man, it's really close between the two of them. And that's kind of what, what I'm looking at here. Like, where do I come up with the difference here? Because Cote played 696, Goulet played 813, so a fair amount more. Um, Goulet only had like 350 more goals. He only had like 
300 more assists. He only had like 600 more points and twice as many penalty minutes. They're basically the same guy, right? Clearly the same guy. Michael Goulet is fucking top tier. Valerie Kaminsky is not a name that I really recognize, but has almost a point per game player. I am, su- I am surprised by that. I don't know that name. Um, like you know, that De- you know Dead Marsh, and you don't know Kaminsky. I, I, I would have gone the name. other way with that in a heartbeat. No, I I don't know this name, but uh, 414 points in 460 games. There's a lot of good guys on here, so me you might not make it yet, but I would probably put him at Maroon tier. And speaking of Maroon tier, we have, at the time, named the youngest captain ever in the NHL. He remains the youngest captain to ever play a game. McDavid was younger when named, but didn't play a game for a little bit. This is a guy who does everything absolutely every part of the game he excels in top tier without a doubt guy is gonna beat the shit out of you cody mcleod that's about the only thing i have to say about him is he's gonna beat the shit out of you yeah you like this kind of guys uh he's a blue tier for that reason alone anton stasny not even a point per game for this guy fucking bum all day long top tier one of the most integral parts of the Colorado Giants in the 90s, Alex Tangay. It's hard not to put him at Maroon Tier here. He's just so good for them. Leaves us with Votek Volsky. Uh, name recognition for me in thinking about that team. He is top tier. Looking at his stats, though, he is not. So I'd go blue tier. So we have four spots, five players who are, well, duh, this guy's on here. Who gets the number one spot for you? Michael Goulet or Michelle Goulet, however you pronounce his name, probably should be number one. See, you had to word it that, like like that, too. I really wanted a little more support on naming uh, Landis Skog number one. That's me in at number three. And now we have to choose Larry Kamensky, Alex Tangay. One, two, three, shoot. One, two, three, shoot. One, two, three, shoot. One, two, three, shoot. Larry Kamensky, it is. Our left wing selections for the Colorado Avalanche are Mikhail Goulet, Gabriel Land of God, Anton Stasny, and Valeri Kamensky. So let's go bowling. We have David Abisher, Peter Buda, Philip Grubauer, Patrick Waugh, and Simeon Valamov. Just a, a, a great list of eh, goaltenders outside of one name. David Abisher has solid numbers. I don't think there was much to watch. He's a blue tier. Peter Buda, I think of as a backup. <laughs> so he's a white tier. Philip Grubauer came in one of Vesna, but I know you were a lot higher on Grubauer than I ever was, so it can't surprise you that I'm going to say blue. I don't know who this Patrick Roy guy is, but he you seem all right. Obvious. Maroon tier. Simeon. Varlamov. At times, he feels vastly underrated. He's really good, but then when he, people start liking him, also he's Vesno candidate. I'm like, I don't know if he's that good. He's good, but he's just nothing exciting. So he's another blue tier. And we have to pick between uh, some yeah, they're all right goaltenders. Do you have a direction that you're you're leaning with these three? See, my initial thought was Varlamov. I mean, Abershire sure had had the shutouts compared to games slightly but a better GAA than Zalamov. My tiebreaker goes towards a Vesna for Grubauer. Yeah, fair. Goaltenders for Colorado, Patrick Waugh, Philip Grubauer. The centers. This is a group. Who do we have? We have Matt Duchesne, always a fan favorite Colorado Avalanche, I think. <laughs> Chris Brewery, Peter Forsberg. Paul Gillis, Dale Hunter, Nathan McKinnon, Ryan O'Reilly, Mike Reiki, Joe Sackett, Paul Stastny, Peter Stastny, and Matt Sundin. And we get four selections, and I am taking about nine of them. Matt Duchesne, you just look at that, man. He should have been a top-tier 
Um, I'm, I'm trying to separate his time in Colorado from his time after Colorado and even his time leaving Colorado. He probably should be a top tier, but man, he's just got a, 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 lot, of, a lot of dirt in the eye. So I'm going to drop him to blue. A name we've talked about once already, uh, Chris Drury. With the Colorado Avalanche, 314 games played, 222 points. Nothing to sniff at, but he's a white tier with this center group. What? Are you kidding? With this center group? Then he's blue because I'm going, because I was flat out fucking maroon tier, top tier for Chris Drury. Really? Won a Calder. Um, Joe Sackick talking about Chris Drury. If you need a goal, you put Drury out on the ice. The clutch guy he he is so much more of a two-way center than a lot of these players that were looking on there and still had the points that's the tough part about these all-time lists is we have to separate these i'm not saying we need to have only four maroon tier guys we obviously can have more than that but we're talking about a list here realistically that is so freaking good it's we have to be a bit harsh all right, Peter Forsberg, you're going to feel the wrath, you white tier motherfucker. What do you got on Paul Gillis? Well, you're an asshole. <laughs> in his proper maroon tier and get it over with. He's, he's maroon tier, 705 points in, four, in 544. Tremendous amount of skill, tremendous amount of uh, size. Paul Gillis. We don't see these kind of stats from a center very often. 1,351 penalty minutes, 576 games played, 233 points. I mean, you could argue almost any tier with this guy, and I would lean towards the bottom. When we're talking that gritty hockey player uh, that does so much more than just the offense. We are talking motherfucking Dale goddamn Hunter. Dale Hunter finished with over a thousand points in his career. Why is over a thousand points in his career so impressive? He has over 3,500 penalty minutes. There is one player with more penalty minutes than Dale Hunter in his career. That's Tiger Williams. Tiger Williams has already made an all-time team. He is second all-time in penalty minutes and has over a thousand points. Tiger Williams is also second when you're looking at players with over 3,000. He's second with half as many points. Dale Hunter is top tier. And speaking of top tier in the modern era, Nathan McKinnon. Nathan McKinnon, you think he's top tier? Yeah. See, I don't even think he's the best player in the league right now. Well, no shit. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, really, if you think about it, I mean, if you start thinking about top five, maybe he doesn't make a top five, but he's got to be damn close. No, I, th- I think he's strong consideration. Like when you're going to argue who's the second best player in the league, I think it comes down to McKinnon or Dry's Idol. Ryan O'Reilly. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Ton of horrors. Yes, this is a Ryan O'Reilly before his giant contract this is a ryan o'reilly before he's like hey i'm a free agent i'm gonna sign a huge contract and go out and buy me a new pickup truck this is the ryan o'reilly before he took that new pickup truck and ran it in the side of a tinny hose <laughs> this is before ryan o'reilly became a legend um this ryan o'reilly and it, in his time in Colorado, really kind of epitomizes what he was trying to establish himself as a leader and a role player and somebody who has the intangibles. Um, But it's kind of really before he really took off with that. And I don't think he really did that too much until after his tenure in Buffalo. So Buffalo really developed that out of him. Yeah. yeah, Buffalo Buffalo's pretty fantastic. Uh, Ryan O'Reilly, I'm probably going to stay white here. He's white here for one reason for me. He won a Lady Bang. Mike Ricci. Good player, alternate captain on those cup winning teams. Um, you could argue blue, but you know, white or blue for me. He's probably blue. I, I think he's somebody that the Colorado fans still look back at with fond memories. Very next name we have on our list 
is Joe Sackick, who was our hands down face of the franchise, hands down top tier player. Uh, no shit. Let's move on with our lives. Paul Stastny, can you hear a point per game player with Colorado? I felt like at times they didn't get the respect. He played on a lot of the bad Colorado teams. He, he's borderline between blue and, and, and maroon. Peter Statsny, another fucking no-brainer top tier. Peter Statsny, the patriarchy of the first family of hockey. Matt Sundin. Unfortunately for him, uh, he got to leave right before Colorado got good and went to Toronto. That poor man. Point per game player and 300 points per game played. I mean, I don't think of him as a Quebec Nordique, so like my initial thought was blue for that reason, but that's pretty difficult to not put him in maroon. Yeah, uh, it's extremely hard not to put him in top tier, and that's why he's going to go there. So now we have seven players that are all on our, well, no shit, they are on this team. Those seven players do not include Chris Drury, who we're leaving off, who I, man, I was going to try to get him into the top four. Um, some bitch. We have a clear number one. And, uh, and really, probably a clear number two, too. Peter Forsberg's our number three. We have one spot. Okay. Let's eliminate two. Okay, so we're eliminating between Dale Hunter, Nathan McKinnon, Paul Statsny, Matt Sundin. Matt Sundin, the first one off. He's clearly more known for another team. Matt Sundin's the first one off, unfortunately. Um, I think the second name off for me is Paul Statsny. I, I can't justify putting Paul Statsny above Dale fucking Hunter or Nathan McKinnon. Uh, just, you're not going to win that argument with anybody. So it's between those two. And uh, good fucking luck. One of them is second all-time in penalty minutes with over a 1,000 points. Second all-time in penalty minutes. And the other one has a lady being. I mean, when you put it like that. Dale Hunter was never a top five player in the league. Nathan McKinnon is the best player on a loaded team. I think that's my tiebreaker. So our centers for the Colorado Avalanche are Joe Sackick, Peter Statsny, Peter Forsberg, Peter McKinnon. And you you remember how we were talking with Detroit? Like, oh my God, look at this like center group in Detroit. Is this going to be the best center group ever? Fucking get the fuck out the way because now we have a rematch of Detroit versus Colorado here in the bloodbath. Problem is we don't have the bloodbath representatives here in Colorado, but we had them show up in Detroit. That's true, that's true. In the first line here, we have Michelle Goulet, Joe Sackett, and Milan Kieduk. Second line, Gabriel Landeskog, Peter Statsny, and Nico Rantana. Third line, we got Anton Statsny, Statsny, Peter Forsberg, and Adam Dudmarsh. And on the fourth side, we got Val, you know, Larry Kaminsky, Nathan McKinnon, and Real Cloutier. Defense, we are pairing up Sandus Oslanish and Adam Foote. Jean-Michael Lyles and Kale McCarr, Sam Gerard and Uwe Krupp, and in net, starting Patrick Waugh, backing him up, Philip Grubauer. And that has been the Colorado Avalanche all-time team. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Lunchroom Syndicate at the Jack Table. I am Christopher. That is Jay. Until next time, deuces. Deuces. Okay, you got that out of your system? Yes. Okay, we're going to try that again. Can I get you to back away from the camera? <laughs> no. <laughs> you, you, you were you were like this <laughs> and and uh, it was it was it was strange and although we could do an entire video like this. Like you take through it. <laughs> And, and there's this weird ass witch. And <laughs>